Here's a look at how this case unfolded. The issue first surfaced in 2014 when auditors flagged 13 issues in the AHTC's accounts. This prompted the Auditor General's Office, or AGO, to launch a probe. In 2015, a report by the AGO found 17 major lapses, namely that there was conflict of interest in engaging FMSS and that there was insufficient money in AHTC's sinking fund, which is used for estate maintenance. Then in 2016, the Town Council appointed KPMG to review its accounts. KPMG alleged that improper payments of $33 million had been made to FMSS and that its shareholders also held key positions in AHTC. KPMG said this was problematic since this allows the shareholders to approve payments, well, to themselves. Then in 2017, AHTC engaged an independent panel to sue the defendants on the grounds that the town councillors had breached their fiduciary duties by not acting in the best interests of residents. Basiris Pongal Town Council filed a similar suit, also with the intent of recovering monies. Now, at that time, Workers' Party MPs rejected all allegations, saying that they had acted in good faith and did not personally benefit in any way. Now, the trial took place over 17 days in October of 2018. Now, it focused on whether the five town councillors, as well as FMSS and its co-owners, are liable for alleged improper payments and fiduciary breaches. Now that, the, now that the court, High Court has released its written judgment, the defendants have one month, and that's to file a notice of appeal. If they opt not to do so, the trial moves on to the second stage. That's where the court will assess how much the defendants will pay the town councils in compensation. In response to this morning's judgment, Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh, along with MP Sylvia Lim and Lao Tia Kyang, they've issued a media statement on their blog. Now, they said that they are in the midst of reviewing the judgment and they will take the advice from their lawyers. They added that they will share more details in due course. The MPs and two other town councillors are represented by Tan Raja and Chia, with Mr. Chelva Retnam Raja as lead counsel. In response to media queries, HDB says that as public monies are involved, HTC should take the appropriate steps to recover the monies misused. HDB adds that it will study the matter further. Now we have Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law, Singapore Management University in studio to discuss this with us further. Eugene, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Um, so you had uh, a skim through of the 338 page document. Uh, give us a sense of what stood out the most to you as you, as you went through that. John, the, what stood out the most was the holding in law uh, by justice uh, um, by the judge, you know, that town councillors hold fiduciary duties vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the town council. So that, what it means is that they are in a position of trust and confidence. They'll be held to a much higher standard in terms of how they go about executing their duties. You know, and first and foremost, they must act in the best interest uh, of the town council. So this has implications not just in, in this particular AHTC case, but it would apply to all town councillors, regardless of which party uh, runs that particular town council. Um, so it is significant because it would mean that uh, town councillors, you know, uh, whether they are elected MPs or not, you know, will now be held to a higher standard of care in terms of how they go about executing their duties. Uh, and, and that is something significant in my view. Uh, and, and hopefully it will also translate to higher levels of corporate governance within uh, the town councils. Because we're talking about significant amounts of uh, public money being involved. Eugene, these three individuals that we're speaking of, they are sitting members of parliament. Can you take us through what this verdict means now for them? Well, Don, this verdict has no uh, consequence in terms of them continuing uh, to function as uh, members of parliament for our unit GRC. Uh, the, the, this stage of the, of, of the case you know, has only determined that they are uh, they are liable for, for, for some of the allegations uh, that have been made against them. Um, it, the amount that they are due to, that they would have to compensate the town council has yet to be determined, and that would be the more significant one. You know? So I think as of this stage, 
um, you know, no implications. I, I think they, the, the MPs will just have to focus very much on, on the second stage of, 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 of the case, um, you know, to, to, in other words, you know, to try to keep the quantum, uh, you know, that, that they would be liable for um, to as small a sum as possible. So we're now looking at the second stage of this trial, which is in de determining the actual amount of liability that's at stake here. Um, we've seen the first half or, or the first part of this trial go on for a really long time. Are we expecting to see uh, a similarly protracted second half of the trial? Um, it could be, because here we are going into the finer details. Uh, you know, the, the questions of um, the, the, the HTC will have to show that this was the loss um, that the town council suffered as a result of the MPs failing in their duties, whether it's fiduciary duty or duty of care and skill. Um, and the defendants, you know, they, they will obviously provide evidence, you know, to show that notwithstanding that the town council did receive uh, services that are of a certain value which, they, which the town council was obliged to, to provide to, to residents. Um, so there'll be a lot of toing and froing, you know. And, and so in terms of the protracted nature of, of, of the second stage, uh, it is unlikely that we will see the resolution uh, coming, you know, in terms of a judgment handed down uh, before the next uh, general election, you know, which we know, you know, could be as late as April 2021. Um, but I think if, if the elections were to be held in, in the first half of 2020, um, you know, I don't think the, the, the three MPs from Aldrin GRC, the el eligibility to stand, you know, will be affected at all. And just to clarify again, um, the headline grabbing figure is $33 million. You don't think that, that may or may not be the amount of liability? Yes, I, I think, you know, looking at the judgment today, because there were, there were some claims that, 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 that the court rejected um, and 33 Point seven million, you know, you know, was the amount of contracts and all that were handed out, mm. uh, and and that figure would be would be applicable if the town council did not receive, you know, <coughs> any value or mm. any service at all. Um, so the quantum should be smaller. The, the, the big question is how much. Mm. Right, because Judge uh, Kanan Ramesh essentially was looking at evidence not to do with loss and damage just as yet. But this verdict notwithstanding, Eugene, uh, you mentioned earlier that these three MPs, they still have to do their work, they're, they're still sitting members of parliament, but do you think there will be political implications at all for the Workers' Party and for them? Certainly, right, uh, Don. I mean, it's because, you know, previously, you know, this, these were just allegations, you know, that they acted without due care, um, they didn't act in the best interest of the residents and, and the town council. These were just allegations, you know, and, 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 and now, you know, we have a high court ruling, you know, that said that they, they failed in, in, in their duties. Um, so it, it becomes harder for them to, to palm it off and say, you know, these are just allegations, you know. So it's something that, would, that, that they would have to live with. Um, they will have to, 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 to continue, you know, their duties to the best of their abilities. Um, but I think it would, it, would, it would be really hard to say that um, this will not uh, affect them. I mean, at the minimum, you know, this is a cloud that hangs over them. Um, you know, they, they will have to carry out their duties as MPs. They will have to plan their strategy and campaign for the next general election and yet also uh, deal with this case because I think we can be sure uh, that, the, that the three MPs will file an appeal, you know, whether they relate to the finding of liability or subsequently, you know, with regard to the quantum of of compensation that, that they have to pay. Um, so in, in that sense, you know, they, they will have to fight the battle on, on so many different fronts because you can imagine, you know, residents will have that, their concerns uh, if you, and, and this is something that they will have to uh, address, you know, as they go about the, the, their normal duties. Mm. Would this verdict affect the leadership structure of the WPA um, in any way, you think? Well, I, I think certainly if, if the, when the day comes, and, and, and that could be a year, two years in, in, in the making, um, you know, if let's say they, uh, they, 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 are, they are found, uh, they are unable to pay, um, you know, the damages uh, that they are liable for, uh, and HTC proceeds with uh, bankruptcy proceedings against them, um, then, you know, WP would probably have to consider, you know, uh, whether they would want to have a change in, in, in leadership, um, because uh, it would be good for uh, you know, the Secretary General of the Workers' Party, you know, to be a member of Parliament and, and not one who is, who is unable to contest because of, of, because of being an undischarged uh, bankrupt. 
Um, so it's, it's, it's lots of issues for, for the WP to consider in the months um, ahead. Um, you know, so if you think about strategy-wise for the next general election, you know, do, do you want to continue to feel these three MPs in, in, in Aljunit? Um, you know, because that, that could be the possibility uh, that they would have to vacate their seats if, let's say, they become um, undischarged bankrupts. Um, so the party will have to think ahead, you know, and, and to think about, you know, what ifs. Uh, and there are many per permutations, right? So we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. You know, in the end, mm -hmm. they may still be able to, to pay, you know, the, 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 the compensation that, 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 they, that they have to, to make good. Uh, and that wouldn't affect their eligibility at all. But certainly at the minimum, uh, it does affect how voters would, would, would think about the, P, the, the WP's ability, you know, to run a, a town council. Uh, but we must also remember that the WP also brings other value propositions to the table. You know, I, I think they still have, uh, they still command a lot of respect, uh, you know, for, for providing the, the opposition uh, in, in Parliament, um, you know, so, so voters will have to grapple with all these different issues. Mm. And just one quick question um, before we, we, we wrap up. Um, the Workers' Party MPs say they're conferring their lawyers on the next steps. What would their strategy be focusing on, in your opinion, uh, at this stage? I think at this stage, you know, if, if let's say, they, 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 they certainly may seek an appeal with regard to whether they are liable, uh, particularly the finding that, that, that town councillors are fiduciaries vis-a-vis -vis the town council. Uh, but, but if they focus on the second stage, I think their immediate focus will, will certainly be on, let's try and see how we can reduce the quantum, you know, keep it to a minimum so that even if we accept liability, uh, the quantum will not be one that, 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 that will break their backs in terms of whether they can, they can, they can compensate the, 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 the town council. So I think that will be the focus uh, you know, in the second stage. All right, Eugene, thanks very much for sharing your insights with us. Always a pleasure having you around. Uh, we've been speaking there with Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law, Singapore Management University.